Is there a um, you know particular procedure or two that you wanted to share some information about for the viewers? Um, yes, definitely. I'm actually very excited to um, share with the viewers uh, a procedure that we call Radiolift. Mm -hmm. um, Radiolift is a procedure that I've developed that uh, basically addresses the face as a whole. And um, I'd be happy to talk more about that definitely if um, you'd like. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Please do. Um, so Radiolift really has two main benefits over previously existing types of um, facelifts. Um, number one, it is really an all-inclusive process. Mm -hmm. So uh, from that standpoint, it really helps um, take some of the um, like guesswork that can be a little bit burdensome on patients. It can be a little mm -hmm. bit stressful on them. It helps take that out of the process. And um, the other benefit of Radiolift is it really approaches the face as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, previous procedures really tended to focus on one part or the other of the face. Mm -hmm. um, by really sort of you know, approaching the face and analyzing it um, holistically, mm -hmm. it really helps um, basically achieve the most natural result when that target is to really have an eye on um, reversing the aging process in a very, very natural way. Mm -hmm. um, this really helps achieve that because it uh, basically really has its, uh, as, as its goal, one of its goals to really uh, provide harmony between the various facial features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And then is that a, um, is the radio lift, is that, you know, a particular machine that you use or is that, what does that exactly um, encompass? Uh, no, it's, it's not a device. It mm -hmm. does take into uh, use a lot of various tools that we have at our disposal, but it's more of a surgical process. It, mm -hmm. um, first of all, starts with that um, very global analysis of the face and neck. So it's very customized to each patient. Um, and by really uh, taking or making good use of all of the various procedures and tools that we have at our disposal, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, again, just basically uh, creates a very, very um, personalized um, reversal of that uh, aging process so that, mm -hmm. you know, people are just looking refreshed. They look like themselves, but just essentially somebody that, you know, looks like they've been on a good vacation, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what a lot of patients these days are going for. You know, they don't so much want to, you know, look like they've had, you know, procedures done. They really just, like you said, they want to look refreshed and like they've, you know, just, uh, just had something really good, you know, happen in their life. Yes, definitely. Um, I think that's, uh, very much along the lines of what a lot of my patients that walk, you know, through the uh, wow. office doors, um, that echoes how they feel and, and what they say. Definitely. And then um, how long do the, you know, results with that typically last? And what do you recommend for patients to really just, you know, be able to maximize the results that they get from that? Um, so, of course, as far as the longevity of results, it is very, very person to person specific. It has to do with a lot of various features, um, like for example, uh, genetic factors, um, depending on skin type, that would mm -hmm. affect how long the results last. Um, mm -hmm. Different uh, sort of patient lifestyle habits. For example, mm -hmm. people who are very, very healthy, they tend to uh, see a much longer lasting result. Mm -hmm. People who, for example, might get excessive sun exposure or, or smoke, mm -hmm. um, they would definitely diminish the longevity of the results. But that being said, um, I can give you a range. Um, it's going to last somewhere between 10 to 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, oh, excuse me, let me uh, say that again. It's 10 to 20 years and on average about 15 years um, is what uh, you know, patients are uh, getting out of this type of treatment. Okay. And then is it, um, does it seem to be better for either you know, restoring some of the lost elasticity of the skin or you know, restoring more volume or is it able to do both? Uh, really, it again um, addresses both. Actually, let me explain that a little bit more. So, sure. um, you know, when we uh, 
are analyzing someone's face, we have to start with what naturally does occur over time. Mm -hmm. So as you um, very, very uh, importantly pointed out, there is loss of elasticity, which allows for sagging and drooping to occur under the effects mm -hmm. of gravity. And mm -hmm. then there's also volume loss. So these changes occur in a very, very complex fashion. You know, um, one of the distinctions with this procedure compared to prior existing procedures is previously uh, doctors and surgeons really focused on a single vector, like, you know, the face falling down. So we're going to go mm -hmm. ahead and lift it back up. But right. we know that there are very complex attachments of muscles and ligaments throughout the face. And in fact, mm -hmm the aging process involves more of a rotational sagging. It's sort of the face is falling down and forward around right. those ligaments. And so basically this allows uh, that lift to happen in a very, very, you know, three dimensional pattern. Mm -hmm. And it really reverses things very naturally. And then again, to your point, that volume loss, we also take care of. It happens in the facial fat. It happens actually in the facial skeleton as well. And mm. we can use various implants like along the chin and the temples to help address that. And this is uh, you know, all inclusive. So it does include those types of procedures when necessary, of course. Mm. Okay, that definitely makes sense. And so that makes sense that it's able to, you know, just give them more of a refreshed appearance if it's, you know, kind of able to, to reverse the way you're talking about with the, the sagging and everything, as opposed to just, you know, pulling the face up, like you were saying that, you know, the, the treatments used to do in the past. Correct. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, um, you know, obviously it's going to vary on which parts of the face you're working on, but what do you see is, you know, the average surgical and recovery time with those procedures? Um, I can tell you that from the standpoint of looking uh, passable, um, the recovery time is going to be about two weeks. Um, that's the outside. So sometimes patients can get back um, earlier than that, depending on um, the procedures that they actually needed. Sometimes it could be as short as seven to 10 days, for example. Um, the procedure time also varies, um, I would say in general. Um, for the sort of average patient coming to see us, it will be somewhere between five to eight hours or so. Um, and that, again, includes everything. Okay. Yeah, that's really not too bad at all. And, um, you know, it's great to hear how the, you know, different treatments have been able to offer, you know, better results for patients. Do you guys do anything in the way of trying to, you know, be able to reduce the downtime and the recovery time with those procedures? Um, yes, in fact, um, we minimize the amount of dissection during surgery. Mm -hmm. And then one of the tools that I was referring to earlier that um, we have incorporated into Radiolift mm -hmm. is something called PDO threads. They are um, essentially barbed suture that mm -hmm. people use for something called a thread lifting procedure. Now, I want to make sure that I really draw a distinction between the way we are using it and when they are used for thread lifts. So thread lifts are just basically using these threads in a non-surgical fashion to lift various parts of the face. And for that, the, the sort of results last maybe about a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, we have incorporated these barbed sutures into this surgical process and it really helps um, bolster or reinforce the um, repositioning of the muscles, the fascia that we do during the procedure mm -hmm. in such a strong way that it actually allows patients to um, get back into their uh, sort of day-to-day -day routine much earlier than in the past with previous procedures it basically acts as a little strengthening um, of the actual lift. Awesome. Yeah, that's good to hear. And then, um, you know, are the, the candidates for that type of procedure, are those typically just patients that would normally be a good fit for traditional facelifts? Um, yes, the, the candidates for facelifts has shifted over the years. Um, you know, in the past, uh, we used to get more patients coming in and saying, you know, I want to wait until I get the biggest change when I do a surgical procedure. 
more and more these days, we have patients coming in and saying, you know, I want to do something before I notice a, a major sort of like sagging and drooping event occurring mm-hmm. in my life. I want to sort of remain looking young, remain looking sure. refreshed. Um, and so those patients are coming in a little bit earlier and they get to enjoy the results a little bit longer. It's really mm-hmm. different strokes for different folks. There's no right or wrong answer there. Um, but, uh, as far as this procedure, again, you're going to have a little bit of a range in terms of the age group that come in sometimes a little bit older for people who want to see a, a major change when they do it. And sometimes a little bit younger for people who are just, you know, trying to maintain, um, and then this really also has to do with the amount of downtime and the surgical time. So people who come in earlier, they need a few, uh, less procedures, People who come in later, they need, uh, you know, a few more things incorporated into the radial lift for them. Mm-hmm. And so that affects the surgical time and downtime as well.